Ma 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 ma. Does not slip. Hi everyone, this is Gwen and welcome back to my sewing and DIY channel. So many of you have requested that I make a video tutorial of the hybrid face mask and here it is! To make the hybrid face mask, you need to have the mask template that is available as a free download on my blog at gwenstellamede.com. Make sure you have the pattern printed at 100% scale and check the gauge using the gauge box in the bottom right corner of the pattern. There are two ways to cutting the fabric pieces for the main body of the mask. You can either cut it with the paper pattern open face or on the fold. If you want to be more efficient in your cutting and sewing, I would definitely encourage you to try to cut multiple layers of the fabric out at the same time. Sometimes I like to fold the paper pattern in half and cut the fabric pieces out on the fold. This method of cutting helps me to make sure that my fabric is cut on the grain a little bit more easily and it also reduces the number of times I have to turn and pivot the scissors when cutting the darts. To make one hybrid face mask, you need to use the mask template to cut one piece for the main body and one piece for the lining. You also need to cut the nose flap. The nose flap is a rectangle that measures 8cm by 20cm and you can do this by using a straight ruler and a pencil. Fold and press your nose flap in half lengthwise. I'm sewing with my secondhand Husqvarna E20 home sewing machine and these are the settings that I'm using for sewing my hybrid face mask. I'm using the straight stitch function, I've got my needle set in the center position, I've got my stitch length set to 3 and my stitch tension set to 4. Sewing face masks involves sewing through multiple layers of fabric, so I highly recommend that you use a sharp, heavy-duty needle for this project. What I'm using here is Jean's sewing needle. This mask is sewn using 2 8 of an inch for seam allowance. I use the outer edge of my regular press of food to guide me in sewing 2 8 of an inch. Start by sewing the darts for the main body and lining pieces of the mask. Sew using a 2 8 of an inch seam allowance and always start from the outer edge to the pointed end for each dart. Do not, and I repeat, do not back stitch. Leave a long tail at the start and end of sewing and tie a knot to secure the stitches at the pointed end of the dart. Once you're done with sewing all the darts, take a pair of scissors and snip off the long tails on the pointed ends of the darts. Leave the long tails on the outer edges of the darts because we're going to be using those long tails to help us with our sewing later. Next, prep the nose flap for a pinning and sewing onto the face mask. You should already have the nose flap folded in half lengthwise. Mark out the midpoint of the nose flap by cutting a small notch on the raw edge of the folded nose flap. Align the midpoint of the folded nose flap to the nose darts and pin it between the main body and lining of the face mask. The main body and lining of the face mask should have their right sides facing each other. To reduce bulk when sewing, make sure you have the darts folded in opposite directions. Once you're done with pinning the folded nose flap along the upper edge of the face mask, continue pinning the main body and lining of the face mask together along the bottom edge. Once again, make sure you've got the darts folded in opposite directions to reduce bulk when sewing. Make sure the long tails from sewing the darts are not tangled up in the process of pinning the pieces together. Sew along the upper edge and the bottom edge of the face mask. Sewing through so many layers, especially when going through the darts, can be quite tricky. So I like to use the long tails to hold on and to kind of just gently pull the face mask through the machine when sewing. 
Remember to backstitch at the start and end so the stitches don't start getting undone when we turn the mask inside out later. Trim off all the tails of thread and start turning the mask inside out. You know, turning the mask inside out can be a little tricky with a small opening, but the trick is really just to hold on to the nose flap and use it to turn the mask inside out. With the mask right side out, pin the nose flap to the lining. Make sure the nose flap lays flat against the lining and then top stitch the upper and lower edges of the mask. Fold the short sides of the mask to create elastic casings. Make sure that the nose flap is lying flat against the lining. Then fold the short edge by 1 cm first, then fold it again by 1.5 cm. Make sure the nose flap is tucked well under the fold. Pin the folded elastic casing in place and repeat for the other short side of the face mask. So the folded elastic casing in place and make sure that the stitch line is about half an inch from the folded edge of the mask. Backstitch at the start and end of this stitch line so the stitches won't unravel with wash and wear. And finally, thread your elastic through the elastic casing and tie it according to your preferred tension or length. I'm using this kind of thin elastic and this is really the only elastic that I got before everything went into lockdown a couple of months ago. So this is really just the elastic that I've been using. Um, you can really just thread it through by hand, but what I like to do is to use a tapestry needle to help me do the work a lot more quickly. I usually like to thread elastic through rather than sewing it directly onto the mask because I feel like then when I do want to change the elastic over time because of wear and whatever, um, it's probably going to be easier for me to do the change rather than to undo stitches. I like to use the reef knot because it's easier to undo and um, to make adjustments rather than a regular dead knot. After tying the knot, I usually hide the excess that's left in the casing itself because sometimes I find that after a couple times of washing, I do have to readjust the length of the elastic. And there you have it. You've finished making your hybrid face mask and now I'm going to show you how to put it on. The key to putting on the hybrid face mask is to make sure that you've got the nose flap lifted up and that you start by putting it on your nose like this and then you put the elastic over your ears. That's it! I hope this video tutorial is helpful for anyone who's interested in making the hybrid face mask and don't forget to head over to my blog to download the free mask template. If you don't have access to a printer, there's also a tutorial on how to draft the mask template on your own. Let me know what you think about this face mask pattern in the comments below. Don't be shy about asking questions. I'll try my best to help you out. And don't forget to share your version with the hashtag GSM hybrid face mask so everyone can see what the face mask looks like on different faces.